Hi everyone! Welcome to this episode of Retro Traveling with Mrs. Z. I'm Mrs. Z. Welcome to my kitchen. We're in the Z kitchen today and I am going to be making some of my famous brioche buns that are great for picnics and for summertime, hamburgers, any type of sandwich. These are really wonderful buns. They are coated with sesame onion topping and they're fantastic. They are made like Japanese milk bread, so they have a really nice consistency of something that you would equate to hot dog buns. So join me for this episode of Retro Traveling with Mrs. Z when we make our brioche buns and take a spin in the Z kitchen. So, hi everyone, it's good to see you again. Today I am going to bake my brioche buns that I make every summer and spring and use them for hot dogs, uh, hamburgers, um, anything that uh, you would think of making a sandwich with. They are fabulous. They're nice and moist and they're every bit as good as you would get in a bakery. And I want to start out by telling you a little bit, this is my flower commercial, although I don't promote or I'm not an uh, endorser for any type of product and I'm not an influencer. I just like to share information. And I want to tell you about my flowers that I use. So I use Francine flower from France. And I love this brand of flower. It is a bio flower. I use T55 and T45. The difference in them is the amount of ash content in the flower. And France just makes a tremendous flower. They know their flower differently than we do here in the United States. I never use American flour, never will. I also don't use any type of uh, United Kingdom flour, just not happening. So I really like the French flour. It makes a, an amazing difference in the quality of bread and the quality of baked goods uh, when you produce them. Uh, the dough is very soft, fluffy, just really light, and it really gives a fantastic crumb. So I really wouldn't use anything else. So if you get a chance, check these out on the internet. It's called Francine Flour. I swear by them. They're the only thing that you'll find in the Z Kitchen. Okay, so using my digital scale, I'm going to measure out 125 grams of all-purpose flour and 125 grams of bread flour. So I'm going to use the difference on the two, T55 and T45, uh, with the Francine Flour but I'm going to measure out, which is equivalent to about um, one cup of each type of flour. Okay, we're going to take the flour and we're going to take our mixing bowl of our mixer, our mixing uh, stand mixer, and we're going to add that into the bowl. So next we're going to add 36 grams of sugar, that's equal to three tablespoons. So we'll throw that in there. I use only kosher salt, it's the only thing I bake with, so I use Morton kosher salt. We're going to add 9 grams of kosher salt, which is equivalent to 1 tablespoon. And today I'm using the quick rise yeast for my recipe. I do work with regular yeast, but this makes my life so much simpler when I use the quick rise. And we're going to add one packet of that to the mix. And you're just going to take your whisk and whisk that around and get that all nice and blended. It's a dry mixture right now, but you want to just get all of your yeast and your salt and the flour and the sugar all mixed up together so that it is blended nicely. Okay, we're going to set this aside and we're going to move to the stove to heat some milk. Okay, so my butter is melted, and again, if this reaches a uh, temperature of 120 degrees, you want to use a digital thermometer or a cooking thermometer to make sure that it doesn't go over that. Okay, so now we're going to take the warm mixture, and we are going to add this to our flour mixture that you set aside. And then we're going to place it on our mixer. If you have a hand mixer, that's fine. I have a KitchenAid. This is my favorite. And you're going to use the paddle mixer for this. And we're going to beat this on medium speed just until the dough is combined. Okay, it doesn't take too long at all to make sure that that dough is combined. It happens pretty fast. 
Okay, you're going to have two eggs set aside because you want these at room temperature. All right, so I want to add one egg into the mixture. Make sure not to get any shell in there. And then we're going to separate one egg. I hate this part. If you're never sure. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. We're going to separate this. Just lovely. And then we're going to add the yolk to the mixture as well. And again, we're going to turn on the mixer and we're going to beat the egg and the egg yolk in here just until it's combined. Done. That's all it takes. Okay, next we're going to take the remaining flour, which is 127 grams of bread flour, and that's equivalent to one cup. And again, we're going to gradually add this into the mixture. Again, we have the paddle attachment in here. And now I'm starting to see the dough inside the mixer start to get that stringy, doughy look to it. It's a really nice moist bread. It's what I like about these uh, buns. They are so fantastic. Uh, just one of the best hamburger buns I, I think I've ever eaten, and certainly the best kind I've ever baked. They're brioche, so it's a French recipe, so it has to be good, right? <laughs> okay, so that's the end of my flour, and again, I'm going to let the mixture do its job and blend this so that I know that it's thoroughly mixed. And again, it's very stringy. And uh, it's doing a uh, the panel uh, cellophane test. You can see it uh, stretching, and it's uh, really got a nice elasticity to it. So it's good. Okay, and again, before I put my paddle attachment in, I want to make sure that I am scraping down these sides because the dough is so wet, it sticks to the sides. So again, in order to get this dough really fully, everything incorporated and everything blended really well you need to, to uh, scrape down the sides and you can do that with a spatula which works really well. Get all that off of here. Okay, and then we're ready to add our dough attachment, our dough book. And we're going to beat this on low speed until a soft, sticky dough forms and that's going to be about 11 or 12 minutes. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we're scraping down the sides and that this is getting incorporated into the dough because um, you definitely want to do that. If you have to, you can shut it off and just make sure that the dough is being scraped, the sides are being scraped, and that you get all of this into the dough because we don't want to miss anything. We need all of this dough for our lovely lovely buns. These are fantastic buns, but we want to get all of this in there. Whoops. <laughs> that never works right, you know? There we go. All right. Again, low speed, and we want to do this for about 11 or 12 minutes. And again, you want a somewhat soft dough to start forming. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now when I tell you that I scraped this down about 20 to 30 times, stopping the mixer and turning it back on, I'm not kidding. This dough is very wet and sticky and you really have to be vigilant on scraping the sides of the bowl down so that all of the dough gets incorporated uh, in the mixing process. And I also, for your note, I did add more flour because in my opinion my dough was a little too sticky to put it on the counter and roll it and get it into a ball. So I needed to add it, and again, that's going to be a judgment call on your part as to you do the touch test, and if it's too sticky and it's sticking to your fingers, you want to add more flour to the, the mixing process until you achieve a nice consistency of the dough so it's soft, but it's not sticky and gooey. So it's a, again, it's a judgment call on that, and uh, you want to make sure that you are scraping down the bowl. It's just, um, it's really 
a, a pain in the butt to do, but it is definitely worth the, the time to do it because all the dough gets incorporated. Okay, so now I have removed my dough. It is out here, and as you can see, it is very, very soft, soft dough. And what we want to do is, on a floured counter, I need too much floured counter. <laughs> I want to go ahead and make a bowl. So you see how I'm pulling it and I'm cupping it and moving it under. And I want to make sure that my hands are floured so when I'm doing this that it creates a nice bowl. Okay, so now that I have my dough formed into a nice smooth ball, I'm going to take my favorite glass cooking bowl, my handy dandy pan, and I'm going to spray and coat the inside of the bowl. And that is because the dough is sticky. Not too sticky, but sticky enough. And I want to make sure that the dough does not stick in there while it's rising. I'm going to carefully take it, make sure that it's even. And I'm going to drop it inside there. And then I'm going to take this pan and spray it on top. Why do I do that? because when I want this dough to rise, but what I don't want is it to stick to anything and I don't want it to form a hard crust on the top. I want it to, to keep that smooth, uh, round, lovely shape and I want it to be very soft so that when we go to actually make the uh, hamburger buns themselves, the rolls, the dough balls, that uh, the dough is easy to work with and it's not cracking on top. So use some Pam on top or a little olive oil if you like that better. Okay, so now I'm going to take my saran wrap and I'm going to carefully place this over top, covering this so that the whole thing's covered. And I'm really paranoid about cutting myself on this because I'm on blood thinners. <laughs> I try not to cut myself on the saran wrap. That would be bad. I would call for a hospital visit. All right, so I want to make sure that this is covered completely. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to set this in my favorite room, which is my dining room. It's draft free. I'm going to set it and keep it warm there and I'm going to let it rise for about an hour. Okay, so while my bread is rising for the last few minutes, what I'm going to do is take my final egg. I'm going to crack that into a small bowl. I am going to add one tablespoon of whole milk to this. And if you already haven't guessed, this is going to be the glaze for the top of my buns, which will make them just golden and brown and so beautiful. So I want to mix this really well with my whisk. Blend it. And we're going to use this and put it on the top of the buns. Okay, so my bread has finished rising and it is beautiful. Again, you can use regular yeast or cake yeast if it's in season where you live. I can't always find it here in Pennsylvania and I just prefer to use the quick rise yeast. It does the trick for me. So it is nice. It's, it looks fantastic. The dough's nice and shiny. It's beautiful. So now I'm going to take the dough and I'm going to transfer it onto a floured surface. Um, I use a granite countertop that's in my kitchen. And we are going to go ahead and start to form the roll, the dough rolls for the buns. Okay, so I dumped my dough out onto the surface. If you can see it, it is beautiful. And we're going to separate this into 10 even balls. So what I do is I just kind of break it apart and you kind of judge. So I'm going to pull this apart. The dough is so soft, it's so billowy. That's what I really love about the French flour. It is just fantastic to work with. I, I'm so glad I read about it and did some research on it and found out why the French are real particular about the flour they use. So I need some extra ones here. Try to make them even, it's hard. Need 
too much. You gotta try to play with the dough until you get it even. Put a little more on that one. Okay, so all of my, my dough balls are pretty much even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to take this and I'm gonna roll these. Loosely, don't try to do this hard or smash it. Just get that dough to just evenly roll around in the palms of your hands. And I say palms because it's both. So that it forms a very nice ball. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that and just place it onto the tray. And we're gonna do that with each one of these. Again, try to get them as even in size as you can. They're not going to be perfect, but they're homemade, so we're not going after perfection here. All of these will fit on the tray with enough room to spare. I love the feel of this dough, and it also smells, it actually smells like pastry dough. So that's kind of a, it doesn't smell like bread dough, it smells like pastry dough, which is great. And again, you just want to roll around and get a really nice ball shape going on. You can get this over so you can see better. I like working with dough. Dough is one of my favorite things to work with. It gives you a real accomplishment when you see all the things that you get to make with this. And it's amazing like what a little bit of flour and sugar and salt can do. Got two more. Just that there. And these will come out the perfect size for just a really nice hamburger. You can do like hot sa sausage on these, whatever your, whatever your preference is. Okay, so we have these, as you can see, and they are just little discs. Now, in order to get the bun shape, I'm going to take my palm and I'm just going to lightly press down on the top of them. You don't want to squish them flat, you just want to lightly make them a little bit flatter. And that's what gives it the nice hamburger bun. look. So I have all of them pushed down. She's down a little bit more. Again, you want to just lightly press with your palm. Don't smash them. You don't want any fingerprints in them. People don't like fingerprints in their food. At least I don't. All right, so now we're going to take our egg wash with the milk in it, and we are going to paint the top of each of the buns. And this will give it a real nice texture. Okay, and then I'm going to add some of the sprinkles. And I am actually adding, I love garlic powder. I don't use garlic salt because it's too salty, but I like garlic powder. So I use the garlic powder on here on the top. It gives it a little bit different flavor. It's great with hamburgers. I eat vegetarian hamburgers, but they're great with that as well. And then I add a little onion powder on top, just a little bit. You don't want it too spicy, just a little to give it flavor. And the last thing I put on is everyone is very familiar with the everything spice on bagels, everything bagels. And I found this at um, Trader Joe's has this, and you can get this on the internet. And this is in every, everything blend. And I'm going to place this on here. And, what, and the everything blend is basically black sesame seeds, toasted sesame seeds, onion, and it has uh, poppy seeds in it. And it is just fantastic. I love this on almost everything. I put this on breads. Um, I use it for spices on a lot of things. It is just an all-purpose spice to me. So I really like this. And this gives a tremendous flavor on top of these rolls. So I really like this a lot. I'm going to add this to each thing. 
and the egg wash on top of it, of course, allows all of these spices to just adhere to the top of the bun. So when this bakes, the flavors just go straight through it and it's fantastic. My whole family likes these. They look forward to these. And when I have guests over, they really enjoy them as well. So this is great. You can make these um, once a week. Put them in your freezer. They freeze fantastic. And just pull them out when you decide to grill or uh, you want a sandwich. All right, so I'm going to put this aside and in a room that is draft free. Let these guys raise for a little bit. And then I'm just going to pop them in the oven and we'll see the finished product. Okay, so it's been a little while and my buns are nice and puffy, which is what I want. And I'm taking the plastic off and they are just beautiful. And the aroma that's coming off of here with the garlic and the onion and all of the different seasonings that are on top, it's just great and it hasn't even been baked yet. So I'm going to take this and pop this in the oven at 350 degrees. I'm going to leave it in for 12 to 15 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. We want a nice golden brown bun on top. And uh, you know, you want them baked but not crisp on the bottom. So you want them done just perfectly. So we'll pop them in the oven and see how these turn out. Okay, so my house smells amazing and the buns are out of the oven and they look fantastic. They're done really well on the bottom. They are just so flaky inside and they are just beautiful. They have a nice top on them and I am very pleased and the smell is just amazing. So I will most likely freeze these. They freeze really well. I use them in the summer so I always have a good selection of breads and rolls and stuff in my freezer that we can just pull out and use if we're deciding to throw something on the grill really fast or if we want a sandwich for lunch or whatever the case. So these are really great. They are brioche buns. They are a fantastic recipe. Uh, you can follow the video if you like to make these on your own, or you can visit my website, www.retrotravelingwithmrszee.com, and I have a list of recipes, including the brioche buns on there for you and your family to enjoy. So let's take a look at these buns here. They look fantastic. The bottom is done, oh, and they smell incredible. So I'm happy with them.